Welcome to Living Life. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. Have you ever really messed up? And I mean a really big time. Uh, like to that degree where you think, you know, this is so bad, this is so severe, there's no way to fix this. I messed up so badly, and especially if this is in relationship with other people where you think they will never forgive me. I lost all of their trust. Um, they will never receive me again. I cannot even step up to them and ask for forgiveness. And so I don't even know if it's worth apologizing because it just might make this worse. Um, I think even in those difficult moments, uh, we still need to do our best to reconcile. We need to admit our wrongdoing. We need to confess that we messed up and we need to ask for forgiveness. But the same fear and the same anxiety, uh, the same shame that we feel in our relationships with others when we mess up, is also something that can keep us away from God when we come to realize how utterly we have failed Him. Let us read today's passage together to see why we can still turn to Him, why there is always forgiveness, and why there is nothing that can ever separate us from God's love. Hosea 11, 1 to 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to the balls, and they burned incense to my images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk taking them by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them, I was like one who lifts a little child to the sheik, and I bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt, and will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? A sword will flash in their cities. It will devour their false prophets and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Even though they call me God Most High, I will by no means exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart is changed within me. All of my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again. For I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come against their cities. They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come from Egypt, trembling like sparrows, from Assyria fluttering like doves. I will settle them in their homes declares the Lord. I'm so grateful that God has allowed me to become a pastor. And I've been in ministry for over two decades now. I think this is now year 23. But if you would have asked anyone at my hometown church in Germany, who amongst these kids here in youth group would become a pastor, I think I would have been the last one to get picked. When I shared with my uh, home uh, church pastor that I felt God's calling into ministry, uh, I wonder how he must have felt. He was very, very encouraging and very, very supportive. But undoubtedly, he knew that I was the kid that caused the most trouble, uh, the kid that was most rebellious, uh, the kid that was in most need of God's grace and mercy. And that's what he did. But this is not just something that affected me in my relationship with God at church. There's a reason why my mother was a prayer warrior. She prayed early in the morning. She prayed for me and my brother early at night. There was a reason for this because I was a troublemaker. Many years later, as I became a little bit older, I asked my mom why she never gave up on me. 
even though I created so much heartache for her, even though I caused so much trouble, even though I made her life often very, very miserable, I asked her, why did she never give up on me? And she just said a very simple answer. Uh, she said, um, this is what a mother does because you are my son. And no matter what you do, how bad you behave, what mistakes you do, how utterly you may uh, act in ways that will disappoint, nothing will change the fact that you are my child. And I don't know who needs to hear this today. Maybe it is you right now, and you're looking at your life, and you look and see just shambles. You just see a shattered life. You see sinful decisions after one another. Maybe you've been running away from God, not just for weeks or months. You've been running away from Him for years, and you just somehow ended up today listening to this channel, tuning into CGN TV. And then this is for you. God is still waiting for you. God will never give up on you. God can never love you less. Why? Because you are His child. And no matter how bad you sin, no matter how much you drift away from Him, nothing will ever change the fact that He has created you and that you are so dearly precious to you. Nothing will ever change the fact that you are so precious to Him that He would send His only begotten Son into this world not to hold judgment and punishment and wrath over you, but to send this good message of forgiveness, the true uh, gospel, the good news to you so that you would return to Him. I see this when we read through verses 8 to 11. Let me read this one more time for you so that these words would convince you and convict you and change you and allow you to turn to God, asking Him for forgiveness, asking Him to receive you. Because even though Israel messed up so badly, even though Israel sinned so gravely against Him, here, starting at verse 8, we see that God in His heart for His people has always this love, this longing for them. How can I give you up, Abraham? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Atma? How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again. For I am God and not a man. Because we as human beings, once we get upset, once we get angry, we sometimes turn away from people. But God doesn't. The Holy One among you, I will not come against their cities. Now he has this message of forgiveness and how he calls you back to him. They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. So we come because we love God and we see his love for us. But we also come in trembling because he is also worthy to be feared. They will, they will come from Egypt, trembling like sparrows, from Assyria, fluttering like doves. I will set them, settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. No matter how badly you messed up, no matter what the enemy uh, tries to convince you of, that God will never receive you again, do not listen to the voice of the enemy, but listen to the voice of the Father who is waiting for you, who is calling you by name, and who wants you to come back into His presence to be settled in. If you've been wondering for quite a while, if you right now just go through the season of drought and you've just turned your back on Him, if you thought that things in this world are more amazing, more exciting than God, but you come to realize that these were flawed and false decisions, and if right now you have so much regret and remorse, but you are so ashamed uh, to turn back to God, let that shame, that guilt, not trick you into believing that God will not receive you. God is waiting for you. 
He's waiting for you right now and He wants you to come back to Him. He wants you to come back home. And He's calling you by name, knowing what you have done, but He will not hold it against you. The Bible in the Old Testament says, I will make myself uh, forget your trespasses. God who is perfect, who is not able to forget, He will make Himself forget even the worst things that we have done. And because of what Christ has done on the cross through His perfect life, and when He died for your sins and my sins, when He also took care of shame and guilt, we can now come into the presence of God with confidence, knowing that He will receive us and He will say, You are righteous. Let us pray. Let us turn to God. Let us bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you right now, this very moment, for your incredible love. And even though at times we mess up and our mistakes are so bad, so grave, so huge, we think there's no hope. We're not listening to the voice of the enemy. We're not even listening to our own voice. We decide to listen to the voice of the Father. And you're calling us. Some of us right now, this very moment, you're calling us back into relationship with you. You remind us that no matter how fierce your anger was with us, it was not with us as a person, but it was about our sinful actions. It was about our disobedience. Your love for us never changed. Our worth never changed. Who we are as God's people never changed. So we are turning away from sinful behavior. We are turning away from disregard of who you are and disobedience, and we are turning back to you. And so, God, as we come, help us to come running. Help us to throw ourselves back into your arms, knowing that you will catch us, that you will receive us, and that you will walk with us. So, God, here we are, your people. Here we are, your sons and your daughters. Help us to be settled in your very presence. Help us to see you in your fullness. And help us to marvel at your beauty. God, we thank you, we love you. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people said, Amen.